Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today a harvest of horror card. Welcome back to all of my subscribers. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as it alert you to new videos going up on the channel. This one is another one of my Halloween makes for 2022. So I just recently picked up the Happy Harvest stamp set from Lawn Fawn. It's been on my list for a while and so this year it made it in the bucket or the basket, so to say. I did not buy the coordinating dies, which might not have been a good choice with this one, but I got it to work on the Brother Scanning Cut, so, so far, so good. I am just going along and inking that cornstalk stamp there multiple times. It would have made a lot more sense for me to put it in the Giant Misty and probably put it in the middle instead of on the side. It is what it is. Yeah, sometimes, you know. I did move it to the middle. This second sheet went a whole lot faster than the first sheet did. I will give it that. And it it went through the Brother Scan and Cut just fine. I just made sure to selectively select my spot so it didn't catch all of the over ink on the top. It was fine. So once I had those all done, I needed to work on my background. So I'm coming in with that cloud stencil from MFT Stamps. I think this one is the small clouds because they have a mini one. I have that one too, but it wasn't that one. So this is their cloud stencil. And then I'm coming in with candied apple, barn red, and then aged mahogany. And then going over it all again with a layer of that candied apple just lightly to make the white not white so the lighter areas are still light they're just not white anymore so it kind of meshes in with what I was going for for my scene so I'm going to bring in a black panel that has a circle cut in it I thought about inking the black all the way around my distress oxide black I don't know I think it needs well I probably would have been better with a foam blender as opposed to my blending brush which you will see later and then I needed that middle corn stack there to be a little bit taller so I just extended it up and above I was totally working off of the Google search image for Children of the Corn. I don't know if I've actually ever seen the entire movie. I know I have seen bits and pieces of Children of the Corn. And living in central Minnesota, surrounded by cornfields, it's probably one of those movies that I saw a little bit of it, got creeped out, and was like, nope, I'm done. I have a Children of the Corn story for you in a little bit. I'll, I'll explain in a little while. So I was trying to get that skull on the cornstalk that kind of looks like a cross. And I don't know all the symbolism of Children of the Corn because I haven't watched the movie completely. So all of my knowledge of Children of the Corn comes from my current Google searches. Aside from the fact that I know there's creepy little kids that live in the corn and they try to murder people. Or adults. That's, that's about my basic knowledge of Children of the Corn. So I'm going to add my base here, or my overlay on top of here. I probably should have inked that bottom part first. So, you know. This one was just, you know, I was making it on the fly. I wanted to do a Children of the Corn card since I got the little mini people. And of course, I needed the corn stock to get a Children of the Corn one. So I'm using the Tiny Friends, the Tiny Farm, and then I'm going to use the plan on it. I needed that knife from in there. And then I will pull in the fork from, I want to say it is, the new tea set. I can't remember offhand. I pulled in a fork from one of the Long Fawn sets. I'm pretty sure it's that one. And so, yes, here is my coloring inspiration and all of my inspiration for that card was that key image there. So I'm just going to take that image, have it off to the side, and then kind of color my images to mirror the main characters in this one. 
and then to get those background little characters in there as well. Most of these were one and or two ink blends, either one ink and then just going over it with it after it dried a second time to get a second coat, or just going in with it with two different markers. I did not write down any of my markers for this one, so if you catch them on screen, that's probably about as much as I can tell you. 35 and E09 for the little people that are in the background, and then to white out there, to give them that glow, I did white gel pen for their eyes. I really should have done glow in the dark on top of it. I did not. If I ever do a remake, it'll have glow in the dark eyes because I think that would be extra creepy. I also probably would have liked to do it with a little bit bigger people, but I had the mini people. I only have like maybe two of the other people and I didn't think they were going to work. They weren't quite sized right. I needed like a middle of the road people and I don't have a middle of the road people. So I have the mini people and then I have the regular sized ones from Lon Fawn. So these ones were the best option for what I had available. And then I'm just going to layer my corn, make my corn into rows here. So the black behind being it was further back and then the darker brown stalks because they're further back and then the lighter stalks up in front, if that helps. So I'm just going to seam build at this point. So we end up picking weeds in the cornfields. From time to time. This year we ended up doing beans, so I joked with my nieces that they were children of the bean soybean field this year. But so I want to say about five years ago, so they were all fairly younger, maybe start of middle school, elementary. So if you would think of like little kids walking through the cornfield in August, and all I could think of was children of the corn. I'm gonna get murdered by the children of the corn. I wonder what people thought when they were walking by and we would walk out with, you know, me and my husband and then my brother-in-law's five kids and our two. So we had seven children in the cornfield with us. Yes. It kind of got, you know, we'd each take a row and you'd walk and then you'd pull the giant red weed out. And so the corn is like over your head. It was probably... That summer it was probably a good seven feet tall. It was super tall that year and yeah. If you've ever walked down corn rows or a corn maze and you hear creepy sounds a few rows over, yeah. We ended up quitting the one day because we heard critters running and we didn't know if it was skunks or raccoons or foxes. And we were like, yep, peace out, we're done. <laughs> it's what it is. Beans wasn't nearly as bad this year just because you can see over the top of the beans. So you can see where everyone's at. When you're walking corn rows, you can't see where everyone's at. It's kind of creepy. So that's my children of the corn. And I always joke with them about being children of the corn, and they have no clue what I'm referencing. Yep. So once I had my scene laid out as, as I wanted it, I did trim off the edges that were kind of hanging out over the bottom and the side. And then I had to figure out what I was doing for the sentiment. I probably should have printed it on my printer and gone that route, but I decided I have this blood red paint pen from Delusions that I can just wing it. I wanted it to be more of an organic handwriting anyways. I didn't want it to be the super beautiful text of like a computer printer. So I did write it out a couple of times first. This time, my pen wasn't working at the beginning. I haven't used it for a long time, so I needed to make sure that it was running smoothly. And once I figured, yep, my spacing was all right, I went and just pens lightly penciled the line so I could get it straight. And then just went over it and then rewrote what I wanted it to say. So I did do a little bit of research on this one to see what some of the, you know, better known quotes were from the movie. So that's how I got the he who walks behind the corn did say. And then I figured my inside sentiment. I was planning on doing a happy Halloween because this essentially was a Halloween style card or I will send it out for a Halloween style card. 
But seeing that they're kids in a cornfield with knives and stuff, I had to switch my inside sentiment up. So to actually die cut the front sentiment here, I am using the simple banner dies or simple sentiment dies from Lawn Fawn, and then I'm just selectively die cutting it. So I did half of it and then I moved the plate down so just that the plate was not on either of the ends or one end or the other so it would only cut so far and it wouldn't cut the one end. So that way I could extend my banner because I don't have a longer banner. I think they do make one, so I might have to invest in one. We'll see. It's on my list. There's a lot of things on my list. So I'm going to just pop that sentiment up with some scrap fun foam here. And I could not get it centered with my pork chop fingers in the way. So I just used that reverse tweezers to help kind of get my fingers out of the way so I could see it. And here's where I was kind of playing on the sentiments. I decided on Happy Harvest. Yep. It kind of fits. Hmm. Kind of corny. Ha ha. It's kind of a corny card. So Was the movie corny? If anyone's watched it, let me know. I don't think I will watch it. I'm not into horror flicks. I like to sleep at night. And there is my Children of the Corn card, my Harvest of Horror. Have a great one. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me and remember to check me out on Instagram at Inky and Scrappy. Subscribe if you have not subscribed yet and I will see you next time.